The next speech is going to be given by Dr. Andrzej Rysz. Andrzej is a medical doctor specialized in radiology and public health. He is the current director responsible for health systems, medical products and innovation at the Directorate General for Health and Food Safety in the European Commission. He was founder and director of the Center for Innovation and Technology Transfer of the School of Public Health of Jagiellonian University in Kraków. He was Deputy Minister of Health in Poland. Andrzej will talk about strong primary care and how it can attribute to strengthening the overall health system. All healthcare systems in the European Union face common challenges like demographic change. Andrzej will explain why there is a need to look for ways of improvement in the primary care, not only in national base, but in general European Union level. It is my great honor to welcome Andrzej Rysz. Please come. Thank you, I'm here. Uh, good morning or good afternoon almost, so I will try to, to skip to my time, so, but I cannot uh, forget, of course, about uh, uh, dragons because they were super great story I hear about yesterday uh, speech and I, I really got some brief from Adam. Uh, but when Mukesh mentioned about the different anecdote um, with health economists, I should add one more. Uh, when we worked together, uh, I was director of Halva. Jagiellonian Consortium for Health. One day we were visiting Ministry of Health and uh, I was you know, still like in academia um, with my Harvard colleagues. We were stepping in the, on the stairs in the Ministry of Health in Warsaw and the lady, cunning lady asked me in Polish, ah, who they are? I said, they're Americans. I said, American doctors. I said, no, economists. And she said, Jesus Christ. So, you know, there's also the Polish accent, you know, and, and for me it's a great honor to be here also because it's also a very sentimental journey. As today with the press conference, they really I understood that 20 years ago we did here together with my GP friends, so Adam and Tomek and uh, Zbyszek this time, uh, and supported by, by Mukesh, we did the so-called crack of health reform, and the reform of primary health care was the main uh, challenge and, and of course the main focus of this of this reform. So pleasure to be here in my new role. I'm already 12 years in the Commission, so I'm more European bureaucrat than doctor here in, in my in my town. But let's see what what I'd like to share with you today. I would like to explain now how European Union is dealing with uh, with different issues related to, to to your work. I know this is a little bit helicopter review and, and uh, it's, it's far away from your practice as this job also was, is different for me than I used to touch patients but now I, I, I can see a little bit bigger picture and I hope I can explain what we are doing. I also would like to explain you know, what is our expertise in this field, you know, how we work with experts from a number of European countries, then how we build this expertise and finally where are they coming and how it can be used to support you your work, your reforms, your changes. So let me start from something with European semester. We just finished once next and last cycle uh, two days ago when the Commission published this, this result. So, but before I go to this, I think it's important to mention that uh, in the Commission in 2014, together with my team, we, we were thinking of how to shape our work in the, in the healthcare systems, and this is how we build this so-called communication about EU agenda, effective, accessible, and resilience health systems, <coughs> a number of elements, and you can see them on slides uh, uh, around the strength of effectiveness, increasing accessibility, and finally improving resilience. And this is really motto and, and framework we are working with my team and, and using all the expertise we can bring to this. But the European semester was born from uh, economic crisis when uh, member states, politicians uh, started to reflect you know, how we can stabilize and go out of crisis and how to build a coordinated framework in the European Union. And it's, it's now all member states are under on, in the system and we, we, we do this every year now, so every year we try to assess member states 
from economic point of view. I am doctor and speaker of economics, so I'm not sure this is right, but this is what I think maybe can help. So first, when we, when we start to understand you know, how health contributes to economic uh, growth you know, we, uh, and, and also to, to economy, it took a while to, to explain you know, that we are part of the, of, the, of the problem, but also we are part of the solution. So first, the expenditures uh, from GDP is, uh, is, 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 depends how you calculate. When you calculate in, in general term, it's 80%, but you just focus on the public expenditures, already 15%. So it's quite huge. You know, this is the, the, what, we, what we spend. Health insurance, health care is supporting the safety active nets, you know, and help us to, and our, our families feel safe and, and work. Uh, health is the uh, factor of productivity of populations, so we also are bringing you know, economic value to this. And finally, health sector is one of the most uh, important sectors concerning the number of high qualified jobs. And then, when you see the future expenditures, uh, the, you know, we are growing and spending more money and more money, and we'll spend more money on health for a number of reasons. Mokesh mentioned many of them already. Uh, I don't know where this number will stop. I see this calculation coming from our, our economics, fr economics friends, you know, and, and the, you, you see this prediction for, for Europe. Uh, so why we, how we analyze, we have the, uh, every uh, country is having its own team of different uh, people. In my team, I have also colleagues working with every individual country and analyze the the, the, the system and see the challenges and, and then we can produce uh, so-called country-specific recommendation and we continue implementation and follow up with member states how they are doing. So this year we just focus on the primary health care. So we have uh, analyzed in the country uh, number of issues and uh, in the primary health care, if you see the 27 reports, because it was not reported for Greece, uh, you see the Austria, Cyprus, Hungary, Ireland, Lithuania, Malta, Poland, Romania, Slovakia. Uh, they were spotted with, with some problem in outpatient uh, and, and healthcare, primary healthcare. So I think it's, a, it's interesting for you, especially those you know uh, going back home to and would like to use some arguments from European level. Please have a look on this country report. They are public now, and so you can you can see them. But then we produce a called country specific recommendation that they focus on health and you have again number of countries they got this recommendation this year and I think it just just cited from Lithuania improve the performance of healthcare system by factors shifting from hospital to outpatient clinics very similar for, for Romania so we really try to to push this agenda from using this instrument a number of slides, many of them I would just uh, show you because I would like you to maybe if you have appetite, go back to some documents or use those slides for in your convenient time. So the other important uh, group we formed was the group uh, of experts from member states working on the health system performance assessment. This is a tool which can help us to understand better how health systems are working, develop the indicators, methodology which allowed understand basically also your role. So we have annual plan, we developed a number of proje projects and reports. We started from the quality of healthcare, the second was on integrated care, just last one we published was on primary care, again in, in your area of interest. And then we are working now on efficiency and resilience coming in next year. So what is important, you know, that in the, in the report, which again is a, is a kind of commission report, but really developed by member states. So again, we are uh, saying about the, about the rethinking, you know, how, how we can learn more, how to do our job, how to assess the primary health care uh, and, and the outcome, which, which is, I think, important that we, we have also to explain, you know, and you have to explain uh, how we are working, what you are producing, why you are important. So the, the, of course, the, the problem is that when you go to, from country to country, for a number of reasons, the this, this system is very poorly developed. And I think there is a question for academia, for, for politicians, can we do this better? So then, then you go to the report and you see that, again, you know, how we are 
kind to, to explain, you know, the, the, the work, the, the, the teams, you know, how to, how to measure relations between different, different primary healthcare professionals. And of course, what, what is important, you know, for, 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 for in this kind of report, that they are not only piece of paper, of course, finally the, the documents, but there's also process involving, you know, number of policy levers or, or politicians as well. So there are, there are uh, preconditions the, the, the experts defined to how to improve the, the primary health care information system, institutionalized performance system, you know, somebody should measure the temperature, uh, and finally, how enable the performance uh, assessment in the policy process. So the big question, of course, in any assessment, any measure is the data. So again, in the primary health care, there is a problem, you know, how to, how to get data and, and how to assess them if you, if you have them. And of course, the, the number of indicators we, 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 we selected from the, from the expertise uh, existing already in, in, in Europe, uh, for example, how, how GPTMS uh, carry out the preventing activities like, uh, for example, cervical or cardiovascular screening programs. There are many others, you can, you can have a look at them. And of course the institutional performance is again important, so there is important how we support uh, primary health care reform with the legislation, training, organization changes, strategic approaches. This is what today journalists ask, you know, why, why we are speaking again about reform after 20 years? Because this is a continuing process. We cannot finish reforming our system because there are always new challenges coming. And finally, it's important also make sure there is a pro policy process which help to change. I mean, on the one hand, we should support the culture of excellence, you know, the best practices could be, should be seen and should be shown to others. And of course, we should recognize the feedback from policy and also from, from the patients. There are examples of different uh, excellence as we, 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 we have seen in, in, the, in different countries, Finland, Italy, the two interesting regions in Italy doing this performance assessment for the primary care. Latvia is trying, uh, Slovenia, Spain, so, so you can have a look when you, when you, when you go this, to this report. This other important report is also linked to, to your work, but this was more looking on the integrated healthcare. So again, you know, here we define 12 different areas of, of, of work which, which can help with the integration uh, and integrated healthcare. And of course, again, this is, this is critical that, 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 you know, someone asked me, should I have all these 12 on my plate to, to really be seen as, as, as building up integrated care system? But of course, the, the, the answer will be, you can start from, from smaller number, you should, but you should really try and consider a number of, of those activities we, we propose in this, in, this, um, in this report. So a number of countries are trying integrated care. In our assessment, we have, we, we have found a you know, number of interesting examples, we, which you can have a look as well, they are in, in our, in our, on our website. It was interesting also a study which uh, showed the uh, 34 good practices in different countries uh, and also regions. So, so, so it's interesting to, to see you know, how, how, how these things work. And I think Europe, the beauty of Europe is that we really can learn from each other. This is, we are not uh, only country, we're not only region, we're not only one clinic or practice which is uh, kind of self-standing. We can really go and as you're coming here to Krakow or you're gathering together, learn from each other. This is really worth Union is about. There's a Polish experience which is also supported by the World Bank and uh, the number of ideas which uh, World Bank teams is uh, supporting and preparing. We also are supporting as a European Commission with uh, additional money to this process. So, so let's see how this, this project will work in the next years. The other example is a building expertise and knowledge. So here maybe you could recognize a uh, face familiar to, to Wonka, uh, Professor Jan de Messener. So Jan is the chairman of the uh, group of experts, uh, 14 experts selected from um, open call. There are academy, academics, there are uh, policy makers, there are people working in practice. 
And they are working together trying to answer a number of difficult questions. You see, for example, from the list uh, from 2016, uh, the question which, which was uh, intriguing for uh, our colleagues working in the economic department, uh, how we can commission uh, from, from private providers and what are their experience. Uh, for example, typology of health, poli health policy reform, so, so, so the number of, of areas. And of course, we, we also turn to this expert group and ask them to advise us on primary health care. And again, they produce a report, which you can have a look here, with, with again, you know, uh, propose, proposing number of, of indicators that can be seen as a, as a, as a way to, 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 to measure the per addressing the performance of primary health care. And uh, it's, it's, of course, you know, um, one area which, which, uh, which this opinion was, was studied and carefully assessed was the human resources. And of course, as we are in Wonka today, I think it's important to, to, to have a look at this because there are numbers of, of important issues you are discussing, you know, how, how to make sure that uh, all these 10 dimensions defined by experts are, 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 are met. And then other type of work, which I think I really much recommend you to, to have a look at, is the so-called state of health in the EU. So again, this is a two-year cycle, which uh, is prepared by a joint team of, of, of uh, OECD and, and Observatory of Healthcare. This is the partnership uh, organization when the European Commission is also a member of this organization, and by my team from European Commission. So this is like a snake. So every year we have uh, so-called health in glance Europe, which is produced by OECD. Then we have country health profile. We make them available th this, this year first time. Uh, sorry, last year uh, in November first time. Companion report, which is uh, uh, the kind of um, uh, assessment of the, of the fundings and uh, voluntary exchange with the process when the team of experts on the request of, of different governments, different ministries of health, are visiting country and discuss the findings in, the, in, our, in our work. So if you go on our website, you will see on one hand, of course, the uh, OECD report it was 2016. So this year, again, it will be published in, in most probably around October, November. Uh, then we have the first cycle last year in November when we produced the country reports and companion and now as I said we are in the phase of voluntary exchange with member states. What was uh, interesting in this company report which I may be referred to, uh, of course you know those, those numbers about the uh, 27 visits on emergency department because of in, uh, they quit primary health care there are countries which are having more problem, countries that do this, managing better this problem, but of course this problem in every, every system. Um, there is issue which was analyzed about the mandatory uh, primary healthcare referral system, how strong gatekeeper system is in, in member states. So again, we try to put this on the visual maps, which also help with the discussion and, and exchange, especially when we go to, to politicians. So what this report said also about the, uh, basically, again, you know, we, with this report, you can see a lot of good recommendations and support for, for primary health care. I mean, the commission and, and my department, we are very strong supporter of, of the primary health care. And there are reasons why we, why we are also having this in this report. But also, I think it's important that this is also going to the ministries, to the regions, we try to, to promote this also through media, make sure that, that this is also used, not just a piece of paper. Uh, and of course, the other element which we also try to acknowledge in this report, companion report, is about integrated healthcare, and again, the role of primary healthcare in the, in the system, uh, the role of professionals. So all these things are there. I think it's, it's important for you when you look for the reference from the European Union to go to these documents and get them used. And as I said already, because as journalists ask me, of course, the very typical question, which European country has problem with the primary health care or primary health care reform? Uh, the answer is, is, is that most of European countries are, are having challenges in the, in the primary health care for different reasons. 
and uh, and for sure there is a question you know uh, especially in the workforce planning how to get better and the numbers we we try to to put together they are quite scary because it's it clearly seen that in 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 uh, there will be more jobs needed in healthcare sector, but at the same time, we, are, we, we cannot get those jobs for a number of reasons. Uh, so so th th there is a question of how governments can, can be more active to recruit, but also to train, to make people stay in jobs. So the, the, there are here, again, numbers to, to be shared. And here's a very nice slide showing the ratio of, of, of nurses and doctors in different countries and, and average, because we try often compare things, or look for the differences. So you can go there and find your country and you see the interesting uh, numbers and, and assessment. And of course, <coughs> it's, a, it's a question how we go from there, you know, the, uh, to money. Money uh, are spent on the primary health care and we have different instruments. It's very much last, last chapter of my presentation. Uh, so we do invest through structure funds and investment funds in the primary care. So when you go to the numbers, there are, there are really big numbers. Uh, there, there was in this so-called current budget of the European Union, this is uh, almost 9 million euros. So they, they went to the health infrastructure, e-health, access and social, uh, to health and social services. And also Greece has a special package of, uh, which was, which was uh, agreed with the Greek government and also in this package we had a number of, of projects and, and, and allocations to, to primary health care. Just selected a few, few countries, again I'm not going to the list, but uh, you see for example Estonia is improving access to primary health care, uh, Greece has on e-health investment, Croatia is primary emergency care, Hungary is improving uh, again health services, again Latvia, same situation, Malta. Uh, Poland, Slovakia, so they are all countries, as I mentioned, you know, having access to, those countries having access to structured funds really try to also allocate them to, to primary health. Do they allocate them properly? Do they allocate right uh, numbers? Of course, the big question, question also to you. Uh, <clears throat> then we have this, as I already mentioned, this uh, so-called uh, ESM stability uh, support program for Greece, which was uh, jointly established by European Union and International Monetary Fund, and, and we, we try to support a number of uh, projects, as I mentioned, in, in, in health. Uh, here you, you see the other system, which was established uh, two years ago, so-called structure reform support services. So again, there are money to help with the best practice uh, transfers, so basically help each other, so, so, so you can make a kind of tailor-made support program from a which, which is coming on request of, 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 of different countries. I, I, I just show you the <coughs> how this goes in, in projects, and uh, we see more and more uh, money in this in this in this system. But also, we see more and more uh, projects coming from uh, from 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 health. So you, when you see the <coughs> how this goes in the in the current. Uh, uh, in, the, in the moment, uh, so you see the, there are a number of, of projects financed in those countries. Uh, I would just give you one example, which is uh, structure reform support service for Austria, on the request of Austria. Austria is reforming primary health care and is also searching for the support from, from, uh, from uh, other countries. So it's, it's showing that, you know, structure funds, this is the money for infrastructure. This one is more for know-how transfer to help each other. And then uh, we have also private money. I mean, the, there was a plan to, to bring more money using matching together public uh, funding with the private funding. And uh, in this field, there are uh, also money for the primary health care, new models for, for, for of infrastructure but the money for R&D, for digital health, for workforces, and uh, small, small medium enterprises. So we have around 40 health-related projects. Uh, I found only one uh, project which was clearly defined to, to support the 
uh, primary health care, there's a project, uh, so-called primary health care centers, uh, island, there, are, th there is allocation of 70 millions and uh, to completely refurbish, organize differently, 14 different locations in Ireland. So, so it'll be interesting to see results. Uh, those should be finalized this year. So we'll see how, from my Irish colleagues, how this works. And final word on uh, something which I think is important, that you can also contribute with your, with your knowledge as Wonka or, 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 or family uh, doc, uh, doctors' colleges to uh, so-called uh, public health best practice portal. Uh, this is a place we open for to share best practices. Uh, you can submit, you know, what you are doing and you like to share with the rest of Europe. Uh, this is assessed by, 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 by experts and when it's seen as a good practice, it will become also published on this, on this portal. So there are a number of <coughs> uh, ways to do it, you know, the areas of, of, of interest defined by, by experts, by member states, and, and also by, by our team, the Commission. The one which I would like to refer you is integrated care, of course, but also others related very much to, 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 to public health. But we have also diabetes, mental health. So there are, there are I think, areas we, you can really bring you good examples and share with others. Europe is about sharing. Europe is about learning together. And Europe is also about be European. So wish you a very good lunch, bon appétit, smacznego, and thank you. Thank you.